Hey everyone, today I'm going to be explaining what the custom blocks are and how to use them in Scratch. So let's get right into it. So if we go down into the My Blocks tab in Scratch, as you can see here, I do not have any blocks, so it says make a block. So if I click on this, it pulls up this tab. This is where you can make custom blocks. So this right here is going to be the name. So let's just name this tutorial block. And for now, you can just click OK. So as you can see, this tutorial block that we just made popped up into the my blocks section and this define tutorial block popped in into our code so you may be kind of confused what these are so if we pull this block out as you can see this kind of looks similar to this and what this block is doing is if you click on it, it as you can see this part right here flashes so that means whenever you run this code it's gonna do whatever is inside of this so if we do when clicked tutorial block and then we have the tutorial block and we put code in there and we set it to go to 0 and y50 so it's going to be go up here and we do when clicked as you can see it moves up there so it's just doing whatever is inside of there so you can put this in a forever loop and you can do whatever you want so say you had a code like go to 0 50 then you had turn 15 degrees move 10 steps then a wait one block and say hello well that's quite a bit of coding and instead of having to do this over and over and over again so like say you want this sprite say you want it to do it over here then you want it to do when i receive do that also well you're gonna have to code it all the time instead you could just do tutorial block because this one block does all of this so you could just do tutorial block and another big thing is if you want to tweak some values like make it go to 70 and turn one degree you have to change it for both versus if you just change it in the define it'll do it for all of them so as you can see right now we have an 80 and then all that stuff and you can just do this 25 blah 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 and it'll actually do that for whenever you do this so it's like a way to basically just make your programming much faster because you don't have to reprogram it every time i hope i explained that well so that is the general idea for these custom blocks so if we go back into custom blocks you can right click and edit any block and as you can see here you may have noticed all these buttons and this button and everything here so i want to quickly explain what these do the first button here is an input and we can name this whatever we want so let's just do a speed and of course you can name this whatever you want the name is just for like organizing and then you can click OK and as you can see it adds this speed right here and then in this tutorial block it adds this input here if we go ahead and do the move 10 steps say in the tutorial block and then we click the tutorial block as you can see it actually moves it of course that's how it works I just explained that but as you can see we can pull out this speed and this speed is corresponds to whatever you put in here so we can do anything that's circle so anything with a circle input like this can fit in there basically all the circle ones any of this all of those ones so if we do move speed steps and now we try to do it it's not gonna move because it's blank here so say we did five instead it's gonna move five if we did one it's gonna move one if it did 25 is going to move 25 so this is really customizable because you can add any of this you can add all the operators you can even add variables in there you can do any of what you want so that is what the input value is the next one is called a boolean input and if we click here let's just name it say yes so this is of course just an example as well so as you can see it's the it's a similar idea to the speed except it's only for a tree true or false the boolean can only be yes or no so as you can see here if we do like an equal sign we say if one is equal to 50 which that is false right so if we do and as you can see this is a kind of hexagon shape so that means we can put it in like if statements so that means we can do like if say yes then that is actually saying if one is equal to 50 so this is just a true or a false so if we put that in an if else if say yes then let's just do say yes otherwise say no so this should say no right because if say yes what we're actually saying is one is equal to 50 and one is not equal to 50 so it's gonna say no as you can see but say we did one equal to one as you can see it's yes so the boolean can only be a true or a false 
the speed can be lots of things. It can actually be letters, it can be numbers, it can be all sort sorts of things. The very last is the simplest. As you can see, it's just a label. So if we add that, it's the same as this. So why this would be helpful is, here, let me delete this. So say we have like a actual platforming script. We have the first one, which is the name of it. So platforming, and then we have a colon. We name this speed. So the first one, speed. Then we make an input and name it speed. Then we do a label and do like say gravity and then do a colon. Then we do an input gravity. So why we're doing this for the label and then the output is if we click OK here, as you can see right here on this custom block, you can actually see what inputs are what because if you have multiple and no labels, they just look like white circles. So we have the speed. I want to set the speed to five, say, then the gravity would be negative one and it helps you kind of organize. And the very last button is run screen without refresh. What this one does is basically makes it instantaneous. So let me give you an example. So here I have a custom block called move away and it is just simply saying move five steps and if if it's touching this sprite two which is tech like it's a wall or something like that then it will repeat until it's not touching it and move negative one steps which is the opposite way of moving so right now if we look here it is not run screen without refresh and this is in a forever loop so it's going to forever do this as you can see it'll go and it'll hit the wall and it'll kind of just keep bouncing and it's not very good looking you can see it moving backwards so if we move this back and then now edit and do run screen without refresh if you remember when I said what that did it makes it do everything super fast to where you can't see it so as you can see it's actually like not bouncing back and forth because it does it where you can't even see it so as you can see it now looks like it's just stopping once it hit the wall and you can't see it actually bouncing it's still doing it but you just can't see it because of the collision. And as you can see, if we try to put it in there, it'll instantly go out because of the run screen without refresh. As of before, if you don't have that on, as you can see, if we put that in there, you can actually see it move back out. So I hope this tutorial helped you out because man, in the beginning, I do remember that I was very confused. Like just in the very beginning, I thought that you could just type whatever you wanted in here and it would magically do it. For instance, I remember the first time I used these, I did like if touching wall go away from it and do gravity and I clicked okay and I thought just doing that would make this cat have gravity and everything and I was so sad when I figured out that this was just a label so thank you all so much for watching I do hope this helped you out or you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it then make sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing it would really mean a lot to me but anyways this has been Owen and I am out